All right, so the colorization process is going pretty well so far. We've got this uh, flat color applied to the various pieces of our character, which is cool. I did leave out the eyes, so let's take just a moment and uh, take care of those. What I'm going to do is grab my magic wand tool, and uh, we'll just click on an eye, and then I'll hold down shift, and I'll click on the other eye. And let's create a new layer. I guess this can probably go uh, just underneath the body diffuse, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can stack these up however you want to. And I don't really need to create a new layer. We need to do a solid color layer. That would be much better. And I'm going to go with something yellowish for now. And I can always adjust that here in just a moment. And let's call this our eye diffuse. Put a space in there. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in and make a few adjustments to that layer. First off, I'm going to put it underneath the body diffuse so that if anything overlaps, that uh, green that we have for the skin is going to take precedence. Also, though, uh, I'm going to paint right on that layer mask uh, with a white paintbrush and just make sure that there's no, uh, no part where it's brushing up against that black line where, uh, where I'm losing the color. Also, go ahead and paint right there behind the pupil, just in case. So you can't really see any changes because it's, it's kind of hidden underneath. It's like if I come over here, you can see where I'm painting. What I'm doing is just painting underneath that green layer. All right, so uh, with that, we've got a base color for the eyes. Let me tweak that around a little. I don't know. Uh, maybe that'll work for now. I'll kind of keep an open mind. I, I might end up changing uh, a lot of this as we go through. But from here, what I'd like to do is start adding some depth to uh, the character by creating some basic shading. Now, uh, I've got my diffuse colors uh, folder here. First thing I'm going to do is create a new layer that takes place outside of, uh, of this folder. And I'm going to call this Skin Shading 1. So it's my first layer of skin shading. Now, the, the approach that I'm going to be taking with shading is going to be very much like a, a tune render, where you have these uh, distinct bands of shading. Now, if you didn't want to take that uh, very distinct approach where you can see the different shading, if you want something that's a bit more airbrushed, you can still follow along with exactly what I'm doing. Just blur your strokes when you're done, and, and you get essentially the same thing. So, uh, for the very first level of shading, we're going to do kind of our, our mid-range shading. And to do this, we're going to grab a 50% gray, and make sure there was no color applied to that. So everything should be, uh, yeah, zero for saturation. That's going to be key. All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is take this skin shading layer, and I'm going to set its blend mode over to multiply. Now, with that out of the way, let's zoom in on a part that we can, uh, we can work on. Uh, let's say right up here underneath the arm just for uh, for starters. It doesn't really matter where we begin. And uh, let's just paint an area. Okay, so I'm not worried about where this is positioned yet. I'm just scribbling as a test area. That's pretty dark. That's a, a little bit more uh, than I'm looking for right now. So what I'm going to do is pull back on my opacity for this layer. And looks like probably right about 40% will do for our very first layer of shading. Okay, so we've got that established. Now let's go ahead and clear this out. So with the layer still selected, I'll just hit Control A, Delete. So that was just a quick test. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and this is really fun, I like this part, is we're going to grab this uh, mask that we have for our body diffuse color. I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to drag the mask up here on top of my skin shading layer. Now what that did is that created a copy of that layer mask and applied it to the skin shading layer. Now why on earth would I do that? Well check this out. Now if we come back over to the skin shading layer with our brush, if I just start arbitrarily scribbling, look what the, what's happening to the shading. It's staying constrained to just where the skin is. It also won't even go on the pieces of clothing. I am just shading the skin and nothing else. So it's a really handy way to kind of keep yourself uh, lined up and keep yourself from uh, coloring on things you don't necessarily want to be coloring on. All right, so where to begin? It doesn't really matter. I guess I'll just pick on the hand. And uh, what I'm doing is just making sure that I've got my established light source, which early on, now, we said that the light would be coming from kind of up here in the upper left-hand corner, kind of blasting down on our character. And shading is one of those things where you're probably going to need to practice it up to a point. And uh, if, you know, if it doesn't look right at first, you can always erase chunks of it and replace stuff. But uh, again, try to tap into that uh, 3D brain that you've been kind of working on as you've been uh, playing with 3D applications. It can really save you a lot of hassle. So the first thing is uh, if we come right in here to the hand and make sure it's nice and big. Let's put a little bit of shading right under the cuff of our little bracer. 
It'll make that kind of start to slope down as we get around to the back of the hand. And this is kind of a lighter shading. This is not very dark, so I don't mind being really bold with it and make it kind of, you know, stretch out across various surfaces. Now, you know, this angle uh, back here has a little arrow for it. All of this would be pointed away from the light, so we can pretty much take all of this and just darken it right up. And the knuckles would also be facing away from the light, so you can just pull those around, maybe put some little uh, divots in between the knuckles, and just darken all this up. Lots of scribbling. And, you know, you could infer that maybe uh, the hand would be catching a little bit of shadow from the side, like maybe carried over from the body. So we can maybe do a quick outline there, uh, maybe just a little bit here for the inside of the knuckle. But I'd leave it pretty much right there. Just keep it simple. You can always come back and adjust later. All right, so now uh, let's come up here and move our way up the arm. Uh, what I like doing is kind of outlining where my shading should go, and then I'll color in when I'm done. So just kind of establish that initial border at first. And all I'm doing is just kind of picturing uh, how this would flow. We know the bicep is going to be wider than the elbow area, so that shading is going to have to kind of open up and accommodate this larger space out here. And I'll just go ahead and scribble all that in. I'm going to take my brush size down just a little bit, and we'll add some sharper accentuation to what's going on here with the shading, so it's not quite so rounded and, you know, a little perfect. And let's also put a little bit of shading here at the back of the elbow that might be being picked up from uh, this part of the body. I'll well, just color that in. I think that'll work. And we could probably improvise just a little bit here on the edge of the bicep. Just just a tad. And I'll probably erase out some of that. It's a little bit thick. Ah, my eraser needs to be a little bit bigger. It's only down to three pixels. That's no good. Uh, two pixels even. All right, so let's go maybe up to five pixels. Yeah, that works. Now just real carefully carve that back out. All right, and we'll go back to our paintbrush. And uh, let's put a little line of shading right underneath the edge of that band. Make it kind of curve down as it moves over here to the outside. All right, now take a step back and see what we've done. So already, we're starting to establish a lot more depth you know, over here versus uh, what's going on. The only thing I'm not liking is that the shading is suggesting a bit of a lump here in this area of the elbow. So. Uh, let's go ahead and clear that up. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, adding some more shading over here. This shouldn't be protruding quite as much. In fact, we might even be able... I don't know if we can really go out this far and still have it look good. But I'll try it, because you can always erase it. I mean, nothing you do is uh, so permanent that you can't just fix it really, really quick. That's not too bad. Um, uh, let's come over there and really just show how we're just highlighting the muscle. I don't know. I'll step away from it, and I'll decide later. If I don't like it, I can always fix it then. All right, so let's uh, move up here to the shoulder. And I'm just going to start kind of blasting through this. So, you know, just outlining the little bit of shoulder muscle taking place there. And we'll carve this in, start to pull back as we get around toward the top of the arm, because that's where the, the light would really start hitting. And I'll blow up my brush a little bit so I can scribble shading down just a little bit more quickly. Clean up that line. And the cool thing about using that mask is now you've got the world's most perfect coloring book. You'll never be able to make it outside the, uh, the lines, which is great. Well, I mean, unless you like coloring outside the lines, which, you know, sometimes I do. All right, let's trace around the edge of the collarbone, and then we'll come up the side of the neck right behind that tendon. I'm just going to run this right into the chin for now. We'll deal with the chin in just a moment. Just go one thing at a time. Don't get yourself too bogged down with any one thing. All right, 
And uh, we'll stop this right here at the ear. We'll just section off that part for now. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So now let's go underneath the chin. And we'll give a little bit of a dip down at the Adam's apple. And there across the side of the neck. And then just scribble all this in. And maybe just a little bit here at the uh, center of the collarbone. All of that should be uh, lit fairly well. We need to do something with the armpit, though, so let's just trace out a nice section here that fills in the armpit. To get too bogged down with the head. I think we'll come back to the head here in just a moment. All right, so uh, the bicep should be pretty well lit. So we'll come right up underneath the bicep. But the arm is also kind of, you know, you'd think it would have to be tilted a little bit forward to accommodate a stick here being in front of it. So the forearm is going to start to fall deeper into shadow as it tilts away from that light. So. Um, blow my brush up a few more steps so I can color this in a little more quickly. Nice big fat brush. Now, uh, if you didn't know, uh, I'm just using the left and right bracket keys to get those fast uh, brush size changes in there. And you know what? I'm going to jump over my brush hardness and we're going to crank that all the way up so we get a pretty razor sharp edge on even bigger brushes because that uh, softening is just driving me nuts. Okay, and I'm going to clean some of that up with my eraser. I'll actually just switch over to the true eraser by hitting the E key. Sometimes turning your pen upside down just doesn't do what you want it to. And what I mean by that is sometimes to me it just feels weird. Okay, and how big is our brush? That's still pretty big. Let's shrink that back down. Pinch that in a little bit there at the bicep. And, yeah, we could, it's possible we could put this whole part of the arm in shadow. I don't know if I really like that, but maybe if we just take this corner of it out, and think subtractively for just a moment. But we can always come back and revisit it later. So let's uh, come back to the, or come to the hand, which all of this should be pretty much uh, in shadow. And I'll shrink my brush down a little bit. So we'll get down here to the underside of the wrist. And we'll come out here to the underside of the hand. And the uh, front part of the, the fingers, the knuckles, that's all going to be turned completely away from the light source. So we'll trace out where the knuckles are going to be and the little spaces in between the knuckles. And then we'll just scribble all this in, darken it up. And we can put a little bit of darkening back there on the thumb just to uh, just to complete that. But I think the main plane of the hand itself should be facing pretty much right at the light source, so we're not going to worry too much more about that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the uh, the head while we're while we're here. So um, I'm thinking most of the side of the head is actually going to be in shadow, and I won't. I don't mind the idea of using some shadowing to really bring out the eyes a little bit. You know, that's why some women wear makeup. You know, have eyeshadow. Uh, but, you know, the side of the nose is going to be uh, in shadow. So we can trace out a shape for that. Uh, we can pull that around, too, on the underside of the eyelid. I'll try to clean that line up a little bit. And we can probably curve that up there into the brow. And i got a lot of coloring to do, so I'll take a quick break. And let's follow this back into the side of the head. Uh, 
And so that little point there, that's just to suggest that, you know, the, the head is not a perfectly round shape. It's got maybe some, you know, kind of indentions along the side of it, that sort of thing. Just break up your lines a little bit, make things look a little, a little more natural. All right, now I'm going to blow my brush up because it's taken too long to color in what I want to see. And the whole trick behind what I'm doing, I mean, if you've already caught on, cool. If you're still a little curious, you just got to you gotta go back to thinking about, you know, which direction each plane of the surface is going to be facing. And, you know, if you're a little bit wrong, uh, you'll notice it, and you can go back and fix it, because it'll look like you've suggested a lump where maybe there shouldn't be one. And, you know, don't be afraid to jump in and make changes. That's what it's all about. And the cool thing about this setup with the layer masks and all that is that uh, changing shading in is, is a very fast process. Very, very easy. All right, so let's come out here to the side of the nose. It's all going to be kind of shaded out. A little bit there on the side of the cheek. Of course, under the nose is going to be shadowed. And right up there in that corner of the jowl. In fact, we could probably trace right along the edge of that jowl line, which will start to push that surface back in a little bit can also use this to uh, help accentuate the lips. So put a little bit of shading right underneath that lower lip. Right. And uh, come along this cheek, you know, the jowl is going to start pointing away from the, uh, the light source. And what I'm going to do is break that up so it looks like there's some lines where the jowl is kind of fatter here and fatter here, but maybe has an indention right here in this area. Uh, let's see, can I just erase all that? There you go. Undo. Fabulous. So let's trace that out. I'll section off just the part of the jowl, and uh, we'll go ahead and just scribble that in. Okay, and uh, the cheek here is going to start, you know, the chin, this is all going to start to point away from the light source as we get around the underside of the chin. Okay, and I'm going to pay a little bit of attention to the ear here. So the ear, you know, a lot of this could be in shadow because it is so close to the side of the head. So we can probably shade a lot of that out. We can step up here to the underside of the ridge along the top of the ear, and a lot of that's going to be shaded out. But some of this I'm going to fudge a little bit uh, in, in that I'm just going to kind of make it up and use the shading more as a way to illustrate depth than as a way to show the true lighting of the subject, just so it's not quite so flat. A little bit of shading at these little notches, too. Like, they've got a little bit of depth to them. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, back to uh, the eyes. Eyes are really important. We could shade the underside of the eye area. But that kind of seems to stand out a little better. I think it's a little bit sunken in. Yeah, I could probably get away with a little bit of a ridge here as well. Right there at the underside of the jowl. Now I notice I've got this little bit of a, a line, and I can't uh, draw an arrow right there. I had a little open area. In most cases, you're probably not going to notice that, but it's driving me nuts. So I'm going to step down here to the body diffuse layer, grab the layer mask, and paint just a little bit of white right there. And that just fills that in. Uh, nice, quick, easy, cheater's way to handle the problem. Okay, um, let's see, what else? Uh, I could probably follow this down, make a little bit more of a shadow there on the inside of the tendon at the neck. And you can see we've already got a lot more depth uh, suggested than what we had a second ago, at least where we've been working. We've still got a ways to go as we uh, move around, so let's move our way down the torso. Um, yeah, step back to the body diffuse layer mask. We fill in a little bit of green right there at that uh, line in the armpit, a couple of gaps. Make sure we find those and take care of them. Also, I'm going to use this shading technique to darken up the nipples. And the reason I'm doing this is that uh, later on, if we need to change the color, 
uh, shading up the nipples in this way will allow the nipples to change color along with the skin. Because in general, I would think that the nipples would be some color that, um, you know, like a darker version of whatever color you have. I guess it could be a lighter version, though. So now let's just start shading out the side of the pectoral muscle. And that's going to really start facing the light maybe a little bit further in. So I'll, I'll actually draw that line in a little further. And probably get a much larger brush for this part. And this shading, I would think, would kind of carry over onto the arm because the arm's going to start being shadowed a bit by the, uh, the actual torso. So it would be all right to add a little bit more to the arm itself. Okay. Let's start coloring all this in. And i got another little tiny gap I can fill in with the uh, diffuse layer. Okay. Now, obviously all of this side of the body is going to be in shadow. So what I'm going to do is draw a really simple line and uh, get a really big brush to speed things up. And we'll go ahead and get all of this color in. And then we'll make it look a little more nice and neat here in just a moment. Or a little more accurate, I think, would probably be a better way to put that. Okay, so just focusing up here for just a moment. Probably a safe bet that the underside of this pectoral muscle is going to start getting some shading. So we can just follow that right into the center of the chest. Darken that up a bit. Maybe get away with a little bit of shading kind of falling up, you know, like the, the pectoral itself is casting a little bit of a shadow. Now over here we get the same thing. So we have a shadow that's starting to form here. And then we can have that kind of flow down the side and then abruptly shoot back. And what that's going to do is start accentuating the bulbousness of the belly. Really start making that belly feel like it starts to really poke out right here in this area, like there'd almost be a crease when he sat down. And that's something else you need to keep in mind, too, is that really, this is where your depth comes from. This is where you really start to add shape to what it is you've, uh, you've designed. Now let's take a step back so we can see where things are going with this. Um, let's really carefully, or I'm just going to rough some stuff in here. Let's go along the underside of the belly. Now, I like the idea of having a little bit of a, uh, a raised area right here at the center of the belly button, because, you know, a lot of people, if you've seen somebody who's got that really big gut, you know, the, there's a, a muscle attachment right down the center of the body, and uh, you'll find that your gut will expand on either side of that. So, I'll just go ahead and get that kind of accentuated. We'll curve this around. I might actually chop a little bit out of this. I'll just grab my eraser and rough that in. We'll make it look clean here in just a moment. All right, so I think that's pretty good just for a, a general shape. Also looks like, depending on the height of the light, uh, you might be able to get away with uh, bringing down our shadow here and under the arm a little bit further. Or under the pectoral, anyway. But that's debatable. You could also say some of it might be catching a uh, shadow from the uh, from the arm, but I don't know about all that. All right, so now we'll clean this up using what we created earlier as guidelines. Uh, sharpen that a bit, it, and color all this in. If you have little tiny gaps too, they don't really matter. Nobody's going to see them. Right. Okay, and I'm going to jump back down to my body diffuse layer, fill in another little gap. Because <laughs> I find those, they drive me crazy. Clean this line up just a little bit, and we'll clean it up.
up all the way through here. And actually, I don't really mind that little step up there. That could that could work for me. I'll sharpen up my pencil a little bit and create a finer line there. I could probably also get away with just connecting that right in here. So there is, is a, an actual line there. And if you wanted to deepen the separation in between the pectorals, you create a line of shading that just kind of runs up the uh, side of the right pectoral on the side of the light. Um, clean that up a little, though. Erase out a chunk of it. Could put a little bit of shadowing behind that pendant. Uh, I could, of course, shade in the belly button. And it looks like we could also clean up some more gaps. Okay. This brings us down to the legs, so we'll just start over here. Let's put a start off with, um, you know, that that gut's going to cast a pretty serious shadow. So let's start off by saying that we had a shadow that wrapped around the leg and went all the way around to the outside. Now, a lot of this side of the leg's already going to be in shadow, so we'll be attaching a, a piece of shading to that, but we'll just start simple. So all of this can probably be darkened up because it's hiding underneath the belly. And let's take a step back so I can kind of start to see the shape of the leg. So I'll just start down here, I'll trace out outside of the leg, just kind of keeping that musculature line in mind. Make a nice flowing line, they'll start to bend in as the leg kind of flattens out and that muscle gets a little smaller. And then all along this side of the knee is going to need to be shaded. This is all going to be pointing away from the camera. Camera, the light, thank you. And we'll follow this around. Now, it's going to be a little more complex in there at the knee, but for now I'm just starting simply. Um, not much of this, I imagine, is going to be facing the light. So we could probably, at the very least, get right down through to here. and just start shading all of this in. Okay, now let's start uh, sharpening things up a little bit. The um, cutoff point for where, you know, one plane facing the light becomes a plane that is not is probably going to be somewhere near the center of the shin bone, but uh, we'll get there. Let's go ahead and shade underneath the kneecap. And then we'll just kind of grab the outer edge of the shin bone. And we'll shade that. And we'll just walk that all the way down. And you can imagine the underside of the knee is going to be pretty dark relatively speaking. And it you know, can look pretty cool if you put some irregularity in the kneecap too. So just by darkening that in, we've made a little indention right in the middle of the knee, like it kind of bunches up like knees tend to do. And we'll grab the top of the kneecap, which would be a little bit shadowed by these leg muscles, and darken that up. And let's start worrying about the quadricep here. We can pull that up, try to keep my lines nice and neat. Let's just stop there for now. Color all of that in. That's a little too far. Let's step back a little bit. And I'll erase some of this. In fact, let's step back a little bit further. And what I'll do is I'll just draw a line that's a lot fatter than what I need. 
And then when we're finished, we'll just grab the eraser and carve out to sharpen it up. Okay, um, before we go too much further down, you know, this loincloth is going to be casting a bit of a shadow. We can start to get that in place. And as we get closer to where the, uh, the loincloth attaches, that shadow is going to get smaller because it's actually closer to the level of the skin. And here, as the leg starts to kind of curve away, uh, that shadow is going to really lengthen. So, pull that down, and this could be brought into a bit more of a point. Okay, and we can clean up some of the areas of shading here, and start cleaning up some of these lines that we've made. shading there on the outside of the knee. Um, you could probably imagine that the uh, opposite leg might cast a little bit of shadow over here, so let's just make a, just a quick section of shading there. And same story with the ankle. Just catching just a tad of shadow, just adding some depth. And I see another little gap in our green, so we'll fix that real fast. And I'm not satisfied with that shape there. Let's just pull that down a little bit further. Just to really kind of suggest that that part of the knee is receding back in. Um, I think I'm, I'm okay with what's going on. The only thing I might change, and that's, I don't want to necessarily fly into the shape that far, um, is that I think, and I'm just going to try this, um, you could probably start pulling this in and make it tilt away from the light a little bit sooner. And maybe having a, an irregularity there, like the muscle starts to kind of pinch in right there. Yeah, I don't know why, I just like that a little better. I'm sure not everybody would. Okay, so let's uh, jump back in here to the final section, which is going to be the right leg. Again, we got uh, the shadow of the belly. So let's make a nice big, even bigger than that, a really big shaded area because that tummy is just taking away all the light. Uh, we'll put a little bit of uh, more or less a depth shadow behind the, uh, the loincloth. So it's kind of faking a drop shadow. And then as the leg kind of turns away from that light source, that shadow is going to really lengthen out. Now, here we run into some sections that are facing pretty much entirely away from the light. We'll give a little bit of room for the ankle. I might need to pull that back a little bit, but... We'll take a look here in just a moment. I got a lot of coloring to do before I evaluate that. Okay. And we'll darken that up. All right, now uh, let's see, pull back for a moment and see what we've created. It's a good start. Um, I think the ankle has been a little bit too overpronounced. Uh, by that shading, so um, so let's get in here and maybe just grab the eraser and start removing some of that shading. Okay. Also, don't like that we've kind of suggested a lump right in here that shouldn't really be there. So we're going to need to really pull this bit of shading in, which I can go with that, because, you know, this this should be generally start to, you know, face away from the light, and get underneath the leg muscle here, and the outside of the leg muscle, underneath the leg muscle here on the kneecap, and 
again, we could do a little bit of irregularity on the knee, and then the bottom of the kneecap itself. I think overall that's going to work. I just need to pull back and have another look at it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do. Um, I'm just not happy. I think I've just put way too much emphasis on that angle. I'm just going to shade the whole thing out for now. Okay, so uh, we've got our, our very first layer of shading for the skin in place now. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. It's going to take practice to make it look exactly like the way you, uh, you'll you probably want it to. But, you know, work with it, and you're going to start to get something. I can already see, and you know, there's little things even here where it looks like maybe I've got uh, light sources that are kind of coming from different directions. Like I might want to have, uh, I might want to take my left leg and you know, accentuate some of the shading a little bit more. But I think overall, just uh, for concept purposes, I think this gets the point across. So that's going to wrap things up for this video, and in the next video we'll go to our next layer of shading.